All right, Itza has been saved, but there is more work to be done. There are rats that need to be cleaned up. Clan Spittle has to be driven back. Let's go ahead and hand out the skill points we've earned. Think fully upgrading Supreme Shield of the Old Ones makes a lot of sense here. Let's push forward to Exlotl as fast as we can. I'm going to take this, clean up the nearby Skaven army. And then fall back to Itza. Let's go through some recruitment here. Um, now, Clan Scryer has also declared war on us. And we have the Blue Vipers at Keytax raiding. They have not declared war on me, but they clearly intend to. In the long run, I'm going to have this army be solely skink focused. In order to best pull that off, we do need to have a uh, beast slayer so that we can get some some better creatures to help support an all skink army since their infantry doesn't hit as hard as Saurus. So I feel like in this uh, local troop uh, recruitment here, we need to go ahead and just start uh, putting together some more skinks with what money we have left over. Still have our skill point here to put in our ancient Croxagore. And we'll put it under Skirmisher where it's going to buff up Skinks further. There are buildings to be built, but with enemies lurking, not really the appropriate time for it. Alright, we've gotten this dilemma here. I don't really want to slow my casualty replenishment. Vampire Coast joins the wars against us. If we capture 500 enemies, we get a blessed Stegadon, which would be really fantastic right now. Chakwa does not have defenses, and Ikat Claw is bearing down on it rather quickly. The siege at Exlutl has been lifted, at least temporarily, leaving Hellkeek to suffer a lot of attrition. We've got Mika moving in over here. I'm actually going to push north, see if we can scare back Ikat Claw. While this army gets a chance to bolster its numbers, essentially. I'm not going to spend anything else on buildings at the moment. I'm going to save my money because we're going to need some troops here. We've got to fill out this army a little. Um, we've gotten a few uh, skinks here as far as skirmishers go. But I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead into this army. And although it is a skink army, and I intend for it to be long run, I'm going to put a couple of Sara spears here just to add a little bit of beef and anti-large. Um, to Sipine's army there. That's how you pronounce his name. I could be absolutely wrong there. But we can now do some further resource or er, research, which let's go ahead and do some research towards our skinks. Not gonna build, and we'll end another turn. The Blue Vipers are continuing to raid, and we're about to suffer rebellion at X level. Of course, Ikaclaw retreated. Full cowardice on display. I'm now going to take our croc boy, march him north to defend Chakwa for the time being, and take our real army south. We can head off um, Clan Scryer. They will probably sack or raise Mouth of Curvesa here. That's why I'm not spending any money on it at the moment. Then, as far as other structures that I want to build, I do also want to build a, a temple so we can start getting Skink Priest. We need one pretty badly in this army. I don't have an open build slot for it at the moment. Could sacrifice a little bit of growth to create the build slot for it, and I believe that that's exactly what we'll do. Acknowledge that we have a rebellion coming, and end another turn. Indeed, the Skaven are going to wreck our settlement here. Expected. It won't go unpunished. Wow, do we have a lot of messages. So, rebellion. We lost a decisive defeat there. Settlement was looted. Province not contested. Settlement lost. Settlement besieged. Yes, yes, plenty of messages. And look, there was yet another army from Clan Scryer up there. 
I can reach the settlement. The settlement doesn't have walls, but does come with reinforcements that could make it quite possible for me to win fights against rather large Skaven forces. The only downside is, is that I have to get there via force march. But now that I'm in the settlement, I don't believe we can be ambushed, and I have a considerable force. Luther Harkon has entered the area. So the Vampire Coast near our settlement there as well. I think what I'm going to do is kind of move in on the down low a little bit. Move up. Move into an ambush stance and see if we can lure Harkon closer. Perhaps taking his forces by surprise or those of Clan Scryer while this siege is going on. I'm going to just have to hope that we don't get a war from Grebitz Bootlicka right now as it would be quite bad. He's taking a lot of money off of us and I'm not real happy about it. Alright, Chakwa is besieged. One thing you gotta really be careful about when playing against the Skaven now in campaign is that they frequently have Doom Rockets. <laughs> now, infantry-wise, the army we're up against isn't terribly frightening. Rattling guns and Jezails, those are a bit frightening. We do have some fast movers that can help us deal with it, and we have enough infantry that we're going to give the Skaven some pretty serious problems. And I think between a Scar Veteran and a Croc, we can take down Ulsus Hemlock, who I think's name would be better stated as Useless. Sup Supine? Supine? Whatever this guy's name is, our giant Croxigore. I want you all to name him for me. His army is here, and I've checkerboarded my deployment because I'm extremely worried about a Doom Rocket from Clan Skyer. Um, it's a very real possibility, so I'm deploying my infantry and checkerboards, and if they do summon any clan rats, we will have to avoid any blobbing, because like I said, the AI tends to use those clan rats as bait, and they will ruin you with a doom rocket, given the opportunity. So here we're going to see the summon and an immediate targeting of a doom rocket. This is why I didn't blob. So the Skaven immediately sacrificing their own unit and taking one of my skinks with it. Unfortunately means that I really could do nothing about them choosing to delete one of my units, but the checkerboarding saved me significant damage. And we are up against a relatively significant foe. You can see that there are some warp lock jazales here, two of them. There are some rattling gun weapon teams and a lot of clan rats that are coming to fight me. And they are led by their warlord here. It's another summoned unit over here. It is unlikely that they have more than one doom rocket. On the flank, I have moved my cold one spear riders. And they are being supported by a chameleon skink from the garrison. So I do have a Saurus Scar veteran as well as my ancient Croxagore Lord here. Croxagore Ancient, I believe they're called. And I'm going to have them lead the way into combat. You can see the Rattling Guns weapon team already causing some trouble. Now remember, they have a Suppress ability that slows your units down prior to combat. It can be quite annoying. The Warlord actually started moving towards this left flank. So I'm going to redeploy my leadership there as I... Well, actually, no, he's over here. So I'm going straight for the Warlord first. And if we can kill the Warlord, that will be the right starting point. Now remember, there is no Lord Croak in this army. The only way I'm going to be successful is to shut down the skirmishers with my skinks and cavalry. Thank goodness I have a unit of cavalry. It's as fast as these skinks are when there's multiple units, one of which is a rattling gun team. It can be quite devastating. Look what they're doing to me over here where I'm trying to get through their lines. That rattling gun team was causing a ton of damage to me. And again, over here, we're going to get suppressed and slowed. It's going to make it very difficult for my skinks to catch. But the skinks now being bait for the rattling guns have allowed my cold one spear riders to emerge from the woods. They do take a couple of shots from the Jezails, but armor piercing on the spear riders is going to be very handy because the Jezails and rattling guns are actually both decently armored see that here 70 armor on both and I'm gonna get this Jezail crew and then with the chameleon skinks pouring in it's gonna continue to force the rest of their skirmishers to run so you can see multiple pressure points 
being the key here to breaking up the Skaven skirmishing and minimizing them. And we have successfully done so. The Warlord was routed, and I took some skink cohorts through the lines everywhere I could and started out flanking maneuvers. My Saurus, despite being powerful, are not near as strong as they were whenever they were up against or in uh, the army of Gorok because Gorok gives them a lot of buffs, a whole lot. And my leadership I was kind of just holding because I knew that this Warlord was going to come back and I'm kind of waiting on him at the moment. Now my cavalry has already claimed one skirmisher. They're chewing through a rattling gun weapon team now. And then back here this warp block Gisele has been caught and held by one of my skink cohorts. But you'd be surprised how well these warp block Gisales hold up against the skink cohort. 70 armor and that shield, it gives them the ability to fight for way longer than they really deserve to. The red crested skinks over here were doing good damage to the rattling gun team. But when the Warlord came back, he caught him. But however, I'm able to swing the cavalry over here. We have to shut down the Rattling Gun teams. I'm going to leave the Red Crested Skinks in here to dig away at the armor of the Warlord. And then I've got the Scar Veteran and my Croxagore Ancient coming to silence the Warlord. So this Cold One Spear Rider is an absolutely clutch unit that was in the garrison here. And this is why I'm working on building the Cold One building where we can recruit some Saurus Cavalry. The Cavalry will increase our ability to be stronger on the battlefield without having Lord Croak with rear charges and the cleanup of enemy skirmishers. We did shut down the uh, enemy Warlord there and now my Cold One Spear Riders are free to do some Alexandrian style lizard tactics here and rear charging the Skaven while they're held by the Saurus Warriors. And that leaves these... <laughs> these Skaven caught between a Gore Rock and a hard place. Ooh, man, it's too bad Gore Rock's not here for that joke to work. At this point, the uh, tide of battle will start to swing in our favor. Let's check out my Croxagore Ancient wrecking Skaven. Croxicor Ancients are quite good at this. You can see his anti-infantry bonus, 460 weapon damage, heavily armor piercing. He'll be cutting through infantry blobs quite well. The Cold One Spear Riders kind of just have to stay moving. There are some regrouped rattling guns in the back that are causing a little bit of trouble. And over here, my infantry lost fairly significantly. Though I have cleaned up my left flank. And so the Skaven are still fighting on over here, despite the fact they have been weakened rather significantly. I'm going to put a charge over here with the cold ones. Attempting to rout some of these clan rats who are fighting my Saurus. Indeed, we are hurting their leadership. After a short charge, I'm just going to pull out and charge another unit whose leadership is wavering. If we can get the attack in the rear penalty, these rats should give way shortly. I don't know what happened to that Skaven. He's like dead in mid-air. That's, that's pretty crazy looking. It's defying gravity. Reinforcements arrive here. The Saurus have held long enough. Their Skink Brothers and Croxagore have come to help finish the fight. And there'll be a chain route at this point as the Skaven forces are not able to hold together their leadership. There's just one last wave of regrouped Skaven headed back in. That's the only thing keeping the power bar up in their favor. Well, I say it was not in their favor, but just keeping it alive for them, keeping it from an all-out chain route. They're going to attack. I'm going to turn to attack. They won't be able to stand. I was already moving to outflank, but they won't even last that long. Looks like the Croxagore Ancients playing like Skaven Golf here. Got some nice moves. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. So yeah, he's just cutting his way through there. And that's going to be the end of this battle. Well, all in all, I'd say that we were pretty effective against Useless. I've renamed him. 
Because he is useless. And now he's dead. Makes a nice pincushion, apparently. He gets away with a lot of clan rats, which is a little bit frustrating. And if I chase him right now, we'll be in bad shape. We do have access to a fair, uh, blessed stegodon. Which is going to hurt our income quite a lot, but also provide us quite a lot of hitting power. With Luther Harkon and Clan Scryer now within reach, and Harkon's army is likely to be quite tough. We're going to be taking some risk here, but we got to face all these enemies and defeat them, or else we're never going to achieve, really, the bomber spam? What the heck is this, Harkon? Seriously? What's up, bro? I want you all to notice what it says that the power bar is here, by the way. Okay? Just, just remember. Right, Gorok now faces off against Clan Scryer and their would-be allies of the Vampire Coast. Let's go check out our enemies. Clan Scryer has taken a hilltop position here. They actually have a couple of units of Rattling Gun weapon teams and Gisales up here. Or at least two Gisales and maybe the Rattling Gun. They've got a decent range component and there are some Storm Vermin with Halberd up here. Not a very, very big army, but uh, they will be able to hold, at least for a little while. You can see some more storm, storm room in there. Rattling guns, warp block gazelles, warp block gazelles. The rattling guns with their ability to uh, stagger units is a big deal. Look at this, this weird sirens here for the vampire coast. Just like going off in the wrong direction. AI for you. And then, of course, they've got a huge army here. There's a lot of Morn Ghouls in their army. There's even a couple of bloated corpses you can see here. Morn Ghouls quite good against infantry and armored infantry, so they will certainly pack a wallop versus my Saurus, though a Saurus spear ought to give them quite a bit of trouble. And while packing good armor piercing damage, these animated hulks have very low armor themselves and are somewhat susceptible. But it depends on the terrain I think that they're going to be fighting in here in terms of how effective they'll be. Now, as far as leadership goes, Luther Harkon is the uh, lord here. And he's going to be annoying, because I really don't have anything as fast as he is, except for Chameleon Skinks. And of course, there is a Vampire Fleet Captain supporting him. Harkon does a lot of missile damage, and if he can stay out of range, which he will try... So you get Lore of Death, Vampire Fleet Captain. So, my objective here, as far as strategy goes, was to approach the Skaven, and I'm being quite careful of their summoned units, because they could call down a Doom Rocket on me. You have to be very, very aware of that. As I'm approaching the Skaven through the trees to minimize the fire of the Warp Block Gisales and the Rattling Gun Weapons team. Now, the only downside, I do get some cover from the Rattling Guns, but whenever they hit me, it still stagger or uh, causes, like, a suppressed... So it's going to make my troops go slow. But using the approach of the forest, you can see a lot of the uh, Gisele hits actually hitting the trees. So it's quite effective to go through. But you can see there, like I said, the staggered, taking my speed all the way down to 20. It is brutal when you get hit by the rattling guns. I'm taking very little damage, but the staggering definitely doing its thing. So coming through the woods, definitely a good idea overall. Now... The Skaven had some uh, halberds over here who did catch sight of my Chameleon Skinks. And I'm going to have to quickly get out of this position before my Chameleon Skinks get trapped in a very bad spot. So I'm going to pull them back this way. It's going to be a tight squeeze because we are right up against the edge of the map. See, we've pushed forward out of the woods. We're going to force back the rattling guns. And I'll go engage the storm vermin. Because of their armor and armor piercing, the Storm Vermin will hold out decently against my elite Saras Warriors, but it's a fight they're likely to lose in the end. The weapon strength of the Storm Vermin is just considerably lower. Their armor, though, will help them, as my Saras Warriors aren't particularly armor piercing. They do have huge weapon damage regardless. See over here, there was a relatively focused unit of Halberds. So they're going to take a deliverance of Itza. But I'm going to make sure I use my magic wisely because I know I have a large army of vampires, including Sirenes, who are headed this way. You can see I am pushing their uh, Gisales 
but they're not the uh, right unit for this. So I'm going to have to bring the Saurus back down out of that fight. It's going to be a huge risk as it's exposed, but I am pushing all four units of my Skink cohort with Javelins forward. And then you can see the White Lizard here taking on the Skaven Warlord, and no Skaven Warlord really wants to be in this position against Gorrock, because Gorrock will drop the rock on them. And that's exactly what he's doing. So you can see that the Skaven Skirmishers do get a position up on the hill, and they are going to get some terribly effective shots in on my Spearmen. That's even facing my shields. Still just going to take gruesome hits here. I don't know if the shields will bro uh, block a uh, warp block to sail. I do get an outflank here. It's going to hurt. These storm vermin are going to be feeling that. And you can see I've got my uh, skink cohort with javelin in position. Unfortunately, the rattling guns actually have decentish armor, and it's helping them uh, take a lot of fire here, whereas most units would have crumbled near immediately. But they do succumb to the javelins, and the warp block Gisales are forced to move up to address it. Both Sirens get tangled up in one fight with a bunch of Morn Ghouls. This is an ideal situation for the deliverance of Itza. And you can see that we darn near got rid of all the Sirens in one hit. Anytime there is an ethereal unit, that's the kind of stuff that dies in droves to a magical attack. And you can see right there that was an extremely effective deliverance of Itza, taking out a couple of dangerous and effective units. Get a uh, Kraken's pull here. Now, where my uh, skinks get tied up with more ghouls, they were they will suffer terribly. But where my Sara spears get tangled up with them, they will do quite well. Here's more skinks up here. I have to get some Sara spears free, but yeah, I did not want my skinks to get tangled up in this fight. They are way out of their league here. I am using the uh, Chameleon Skinks. Unfortunately, a Storm Vermin came back right on the edge of the line. Yeah, CA please. I know that wouldn't have happened with my troops. Anyway, you can see that the Sara Spearmen have arrived, and the Morn Ghouls will have their match here. AI does have bombs. A lot of bombs. And so I'm attempting not to let them sit back and get to throw those for too long. You can see right here they are getting a few of them off. It's causing a lot of damage, and it's not what I want. See the bombers here. They're able to uh, definitely get some work done as they're able to sit back and throw. So I want to push in and engage, and the AI has allowed a lot of their bombs to get engaged, which they should not have. There was a pretty good ball of bombs here, so again, a good place for a deliverance of Itza. Clear these units out, because the vampire units are uh, going to fight to the death. The quicker you get rid of them, the quicker you can tilt that power bar in your favor. And it has been a pretty tough fight here, actually. The Skaven had some decent infantry and skirmishers, but really it was uh, a, a miscue on my part over here. My Saurus Spears should have been in support of my Chameleon Skeeks, knowing that they couldn't hold out versus the Morghuls. So the strategic error on my part, and I lost a lot of uh, Chameleon Skinks and Skink cohorts with Javelins, so... This is a big mistake on my part, and it's costing me. Meanwhile, Croak is doing his best to make up for it, and his best is typically good enough. <laughs> He's got 315 kills, nowhere near the 800 of the last battle, but still quite respectable. I'm gonna keep using his uh, Supreme Shield. Gorrock has definitely got a fight on his hands against these Morn Ghouls. There's a bunch of them, and they cause a lot of damage. Fortunately for me, he's very tanky. I'm going to bring Croak in here as well. And then I was attempting to get closer to Harkon, but you can see the coward's just going to keep his distance and shoot. He really doesn't want to fight. The Morn Ghouls are taking a significant amount of damage and will go down. Meanwhile, some more of my troops have gotten free because of the help of Lord Croak. And I'm going to start bringing those Sara Spearmen into a position to fight. I did get one Skink Cohort with Javelin that was free, and I've used it to chase down uh, Skirmishers. Unfortunately, they got caught by a regrouped Storm Vermin here that was not ideal. But for the most part, they were able to deal with the Warplock Gisales. There's a couple of small bits of them left. 
that's about it, and that uh, Storm Vermin is about to give up. Over here, the Vampire Fleet Captain got a little ahead of herself. He, she, whatever. I won't assume. But got ahead of itself. <laughs> Sounds like a female, but, you know, again. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, it's just re-dead now. Croak over here finishing off some uh, uh, zombie pirate mob. You can see my Saurus warriors here. Had no problem cutting through the low armor pirate infantry. The only problem that was ever in this fight was the higher armor Skaven infantry and the fact that my infantry got overworked because of my initial failure with the spearmen to support my chameleons properly and my other skinks. But you can see how effective these Sara spears were there, 127 kills. And Harkon is running away like a filthy, stinky coward. I can't catch him, and his crumbling is extremely slow because we're not able to put hit point pressure on him. So he's being a big fat turd right now. And despite my good shield, he's causing a good deal of damage. It's like, oh, it can't catch me. I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy. Crazy Harkon. <laughs> yeah, whatever. My skinks are coming, and although he may be able to outrun a large lizard, he won't be able to outrun my skinks. And they are poisonous, and we'll be able to catch him eventually. This becomes a fruitless endeavor here. Harkon has a lot of armor-piercing missile damage. It's a pretty annoying thing, actually. Let's go take a look here and see exactly. Yeah, see this physical resistance that he takes away. So I'm going to chase him with the skinks, waste some of his ammo. See the little turd now. Not so fast, is he? Harkon is pretty fast here. Speed 40. I don't understand why he's so much faster than someone like Marcus Wolfhart, but don't get me wrong, I'm not necessarily asking for Wolfhart to take a buff. He's already pretty darn good. Gorok is going to uh, knock the cobwebs out of his head. Boy, that was a shot right there. <laughs> that was beautiful. Well, we've had some big victories. Harkon is defeated. Clan Scryer has been wounded badly. Unfortunately for me, there's still a pretty big Skaven rebellion here. No thanks to the idiots from Clan Spittle being up here earlier. My army in the north is still replenishing. And uh, a lot of you all have suggested to me names. I have seen those suggestions. So... Don't worry, I'll work it in on the next episode. I'm going to go back and just make sure I pick the one that had the most uh, suggestions. So thank you for participating. And as always, you will please continue to give me input to the campaign. Um, I feel like that we're uh, in a pretty good place here, and I love getting the feedback from you all. And again, appreciate that you're enjoying it. So next episode, we got a lot to do. We've got to clear out more of the Skaven infestation here. We have to beat back Ikat Claw. If we take a look at our garrison detail at uh, Ketza, it's not fantastic. It could cause army, though, pretty small. Um, so we'll definitely want to bring some help. Unfortunately, banning is going to get away. Um, I mean, I could probably go out and assault them now that I have the Stegodon. Actually, we'll probably do that in the beginning of next episode, just to make sure that army dies. We don't want Clan Scryer getting away quickly or easily. We want to cause them as much pain as possible, but... We have another looming threat over here, too, with Grebit's boot licker. The only thing he's going to be licking is butt when I'm finished with him. And uh, that's going to be the butts of his fallen comrades, by the way. Um, in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> anyway, Grebit's is going to go down. Uh, he could attack us at any moment, which would be bad, because his army is rather large. So we've got a lot to take care of. And despite having a very powerful army, we're spread right now with a lot of enemies. Ideally, what we want here is to deal a painful blow to one of our enemies and get them to quit. And this looks like a good opportunity for us. We have beaten Luther Harkon badly, and we can probably... No, he doesn't want... Wow, what an idiot. Look at the balance bar, Harkon. Freaking crap, man. Anyway, maybe he'll come begging. We'll extract some money out of him. Let him have peace temporarily. We know we're not really making peace with them. 
and then uh, we'll finish off the rest of these Skaven. Um, in fact, if I even could get a temporary peace treaty with Clan Scryer, I would lie to them and take it, just so I can kill Clan Spittle and take the Altar of the Horn Rat and then kill Clan Scryer. None of the Skaven will be allowed to persist. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Gorok campaign. I'll be back with more soon. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.